friends hello hi how are you i hope you guys are having an amazing day today welcome to day two of Glomus. Oh my god, we're moving right along. Basically done. Over. Um, hi. So today we are going to be doing a video that I actually did for the first day of Glomus last year and you guys really, really enjoyed it and it was called Reviewing Makeup I Got for Christmas Last Year. Basically what I did was going through the makeup I got for Christmas last year and kind of deciding like what did I keep? What did I like? What did I not like? Just to kind of see a year later how I'm feeling about these products after literally having them in my collection for a year. This year, some shocking things happened when some of the makeup didn't even stay in my collection a whole year. So we're gonna talk about it. And then some of it obviously did, and it's right here. Today's candle of the day is Vanilla Bean from the White Barn brand, which is the bougie version of Bath & Body Works. <laughs> it's literally the same company. I went Black Friday shopping and they had a deal where you could like buy three candles and get three candles for free. And I was like, it has to happen because I need a variety of candles for Glomus. So today's is Vanilla Bean. If you have it, you can burn it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, let's, I don't even know where to start. Let's start with the stuff that we actually still have and then move on to the stuff that I ended up decluttering throughout the year. The first thing I want to talk about is actually this because this was the one that I was the most excited for on Christmas was getting this. This is the Marc Jacobs um, Omega Glaze All Over Foil Illuminizer and this is their OG one, the gold. I still think this is stunning. I've used it quite a bit this year and it is just such a pretty, beautiful, foiled, amazing glow. I actually ended up buying the white highlighter that they came out with, the second, like the second one. It was, they did this and then they did the Runway Collection, which was the same formula, but in white. And in mixing the two of those together actually makes this beautiful white gold shade that I absolutely adore and love. And I use these quite a bit. I will say for the price, they are pretty expensive. Um, I think $50 for a highlighter is a lot. And I think if it wasn't such a unique formula, I probably wouldn't think it was worth the money. But because it's such a unique formula, if you had the money and you wanted it, I think this one was fantastic. Um, I did end up getting their like pink one that they came out with from their like rock star collection. And that one was horrible. It was so, 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 so bad. And I ended up hating that one and decluttering it. But this one... I love. This was my OG. I stand by that this was fantastic and I was very, very happy that I got this for Christmas. This one just was so good. Ugh. I'm looking at it right now and I'm like, are you kidding? It's so pretty. Like, it's beautiful. I would never travel with it though because the pan is so big and I'm sure the product is spread out to be pretty thin and I worry that it would break. <laughs> so it's one I would never like travel with or leave the house with, but it's still beautiful. Um, Let's talk about this next. Even when I got this for Christmas, I was like, okay, all, most of what I got for Christmas last year, I rewatched my whole what I got for Christmas video so I could pick the stuff that I got. And most of the stuff I got, I was like, you guys told me. So it was very like subscriber motivated what you guys wanted. A lot of what I got for Christmas was stuff that I wanted to use on my channel. And especially because at the size I was, I was way smaller than I am now. And a lot of it, like I couldn't really afford to buy myself. So I was like, I'm gonna ask for all these things for my channel. Uh, this was the Hourglass Stick Foundation, and you guys asked, a, lo a lot of you asked me to review this, a lot of you wanted to know my opinion. Um, here's the tea. This is not that good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe it's just my skin type, because all skin types are different, so maybe for you this is like your holy grail. This is just so overpriced, and for the amount of product you actually get, which is like absolutely absurd, you get like 0.25 ounces, which is absurd, okay? It's not that good. It's not life changing. It's okay. I, I'll use it. Like I definitely, this is almost used up honestly at this point. Not that that was difficult to do in any way, but this thing's almost, yeah, this thing's almost gone. I have about that much left. And I mean, I'll use it up. It's a, it's okay. I like mixing it with other foundations. It just doesn't give that much coverage, which is weird. Cause I feel like a lot of people said it gave a good amount of coverage. It doesn't give that much coverage. Is a very silky texture, which is why I imagine people really like it because it's very, very easy to blend. Sometimes with stick foundations, I found that they're a little bit harder to blend because they're not as creamy. This is a very silky and creamy foundation, so it is easy to blend. But when it blends out, I wasn't a huge fan of the coverage. I found that it stuck into my my pores a little bit too much. Um, whereas even with like really pore filling primers or primers where normally I'll put on foundation and I look very smooth, this kind of sunk into them. Wasn't impressed. Like it mixed with other things because at more like like I said stiffer foundations. I don't know a better word, but for more stiff foundations, adding this in 
skin as a sort of creamy like base is helpful but this was not worth the money and I would not recommend you guys spending your money on it because after having it for a year this is I still don't understand the hype around to this like I just don't I don't get it this is the Milani oh my gosh this Milani baked bronzer this thing is amazing I actually watched what I said about it in the video and I was like still true. It is one of the best illuminating bronzers I've ever tried. This and the Too Faced Sweetie Pie bronzer are the best summer bronzers that you could ever have. This gives you a beautiful just glow. You can't even see it, but it gives you this glowy sun-kissed bronze without having glitter in it, without just being a bronze with glitter. There is still glitter in this, but it's not chunky and it's perfectly distributed, so it just ends up looking very glowy instead of glittery. And I think with bronzers, there's a big difference between a really glittery bronzer and a really glowy bronzer. This one is perfectly glowy and it's so affordable, which is why I love it so much. I love Milani products in general. I think their baked products, specifically their baked blushes and this baked bronzer are phenomenal, but this was so good. I used this so much this summer. And that's funny because I actually said in the video, I was like, I probably won't use this till the summer. I didn't. I didn't really touch this until the summertime. And then we got into summer and I wanted to just look glowy and bronzed and this provided that for me. I think this is such a good bronzer. I think if I were to rebuy it, which I might eventually because I've already waned, I've wore down this little bubble here quite a bit. If I were to rebuy it, I don't know if they come in different shades, but I would want it in a shade just a little bit darker just because when I'm tan, this is kind of the same color as my skin tone when I'm tanner. And I think it would have been nice to have something that actually like bronzed a little bit more, but I think this is amazing. I love this. Let's talk about this. This is Gucci Guilty. Um, it's really, the packaging gets so dirty and there's nothing you can do about it. Last year I was like, oh the mirror, like look at this. No. It gets so dirty it's impossible to keep clean, but besides it looking gross, you can see I've used pretty much half of it at this point. Um, I'm right at the halfway mark, I feel like. Maybe a little over, a little under half. Perfumes take me forever to use up, honestly, because I still have my black opium from a couple years ago, and I wear this so much and I'm still just under like halfway through with it. Like I wear this literally, this is my favorite perfume. However, I like this. I think it's really fun. I guess the kind of day that I would wear this, cause for me perfumes are about my mood. That's kind of how I decide. And normally I'm in a very like, if I wanna smell like really good and I'm fancy and I'm dressed up, I'll wear my black opium because I feel like it makes me just smell like and look and feel better when I wear it, right? This one is what I wear weirdly when I wear like hoodies. And I don't know why, but it still smells so good and it's such a nice fragrance. And like, I love being able to smell good, but also just be wearing like a hoodie and like a, a crew neck or like when I wear like crew necks and sneakers, like this is always the perfume I go for. I don't know why, especially in like the fall and winter time, which is right now. In the summer, I typically lean towards like Marc Jacobs Daisy when I'm wearing like shorts and tank tops. But if it's like winter and I, I don't know why, maybe because I got it in the winter time, but if it's like winter and I'm wearing a hoodie, this is what I want to wear. Um, I still love this. I, I usually ask for one kind of nicer perfume every Christmas because they last so long for me. And it's just nice to have, like I'm just kind of slowly building up a collection of perfumes that I really love. And this one I was, I will not regret having. I think it smells great. The only perfume I ever regret, if we're gonna talk about perfumes really quick, I don't have enough to do like a perfume collection video, but a brand sent me this Tom Ford Black Orchid perfume. And initially I like loved it because it does smell amazing, the Black Orchid. It smells so good. This perfume is stupid expensive though. Like it smells so good, this actual perfume. But I noticed that it would make me like sniffly and I think I'm low key allergic to this. And that's the only, I still love how it smells but I think I'm allergic to it. And that's the only thing like perfume that I ever regret getting. I think it adds a nice different to my collection because I have the kind of deep sexy scent with the black opium and I have the floral with like the Mark Daisy and I have my sugar, my sugar rush one. Um, so to have kind of an in-between one where it's not super florally but it's not super deep, I really like it. Okay, I also got this Dior Backstage Foundation for Christmas last year. I love this stuff. It's so good. This stuff is very lightweight so it's not full coverage by any means and I would honestly think of it more as like a skin tint if anything. 
um, which is kind of interesting. But it just leaves this really nice kind of veil over your face that's like really just makes your skin look every like BB cream that I've ever wanted to be. This is that for me. Like it, it leaves just my skin looking nice. It makes it looking even. It doesn't really look like I'm wearing makeup when I wear this stuff, which is really nice. And honestly, it's expensive, but at least you get one full fluid ounce, which is what this doesn't have. That's like a quarter of this, by the way. So this at least has the standard fluid ounce. The packaging honestly sucks. Um, it's the same problem that I had. Oh, it's already doing it. It's the same problem I had with the Anastasia eye primer is it because it's that squeezy tube, the second you take off the cap, it like bubbles and explodes everywhere, which I hate about this. Like I wish they would have done a different one, but I think overall the product inside is actually phenomenal and I've really enjoyed using it this year. I, I kind of feel like I almost forget about this foundation because I have other ones that are a little bit more full coverage that I tend to lean towards a little bit more. Um, but this one is really good. I feel like this deserved more hype last year than it actually got because this is a fantastic foundation. It's an interesting formula. Unlike other things that I've tried, which I think is kind of at this point in my makeup journey, the stuff that I like kind of gravitate towards is stuff that's different and stuff that I haven't really tried before. Yeah. It sucks watching my what I got for Christmas video back last year because I was so excited about this and I was like talking about how beautiful it is and I was like so so excited and this was just the biggest letdown of my time. Like this was honestly one of the biggest makeup regrets that I have. Like I wish I had never asked for this because it was so expensive and I knew how expensive it was but I was like no like this is my top of my, I remember putting it at the top of my Christmas list. Like this is really like what I wanted Oh, and I got it and it just isn't good. And the only reason I got it was because everyone, everyone was like, this is so worth the money. It's like the best product. It's my favorite thing to contour with. And I was like, I need this, obviously. I was still in that mindset of like being tricked by people. I now know that Charlotte Tilbury does a lot of undisclosed sponsorships with influencers. So maybe that's something to do with it. I don't know. Everybody said I needed this. It's not good. The glow, which is actually supposed to be like a legitimate highlight is so powdery and you barely can even, like look at that compared to the Marc Jacobs one. Are you kidding me? And the Marc Jacobs one is so much cheaper. Anyway, contour shade is not bad but it's not life changing. <laughs> it's not $70 good. Like the whole reason I think people like this is because the packaging is cute and the products are okay. Um, but for this price point, these products needed to like blow my mind and like blow me out of the water. And this just did not do that for me. Man, I'm so disappointed in this. Let's talk about something I love though. I actually love this J-Cat highlighter. This is the J-Cat You Glow Girl Baked Highlighter in Pink Goddess. I bring this when I travel with me. I genuinely love this highlighter. I don't know what it is about it because it is a little bit more sparkly, which sometimes in highlights I don't love, but something about the color being this like really beautiful pink shade and being very sparkly, it just works. I don't, I don't know what it is, but this is amazing. It's so, so, so good. And they're so cheap. I love the J cat highlighters. I think they're fantastic. I had a white shade, um, that I actually gave to Lacey from spooky lips and fat hips because she, it was just a better fit for her skin tone. It was too like white on me. And it's funny because in the video last year, I talked about how I think these are dupes for Ofra's highlighters, the glazed donut. And I had pillow talk no longer think they're a dupe for the highlighter formula because I have Rodeo drive and that highlighter formula is just like perfection. Like it's so, so good. But I actually ended up decluttering Pillow Talk and Glazed Donut and kept this one instead because this was a color that I liked more than Pillow Talk and I liked the formula more than those. Something about Ofra's highlighter formula I think is like different with their lighter highlighters because Rodeo Drive is like stunning and beautiful and perfect, but I don't get that same effect with their lighter ones, Pillow Talk and Glazed Donut. Um, whereas this one, I get this beautiful, pink, just gorgeous, sparkly. I think it's because the glitter is so fine and like micro glitter that I actually enjoy it because it gives you this beautiful, like almost like it has like white glitter in it. That's just so fine and beautiful. I don't, I can't really describe it, but I love this stuff. Like this is such a good highlighter and it's so affordable. It was like $4, like so affordable. Love. Let's talk about this. Okay. I feel like so far I've had pretty strong opinions. This is a pretty boring opinion. I think 
this is okay. I like it. This is the Huda New Nude palette. I pretty much get one of the Huda palettes every year. My aunt always buys them for me now. That's kind of been the tradition the past two years. And I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that I'm getting the retrograde palette from her. Um, but this is the New Nude. And I mean, I like it. I like it. I use it. I use these shimmers a lot because I just think they're so beautiful. The concealer shade got pretty gross pretty fast. So I kind of wish she hadn't have put that in. Um, but I mean, I enjoy this palette. I use it a lot. It's, it's kind of like a neutral opinion because it's, I like it, but I'm not like, oh my God, go out and buy this. This is the best palette you've ever tried in your life because it's not. It's just a normal, neutrally pink palette. However, it is really pretty and I like it a lot more than I thought I would. I use it a lot more than I thought I would. I thought because I had other sort of pinks and purples in my collection, I wouldn't really use this. I actually do. I use this quite a bit because a lot of these, especially these lighter shades, are very, very unique to my collection. The darker shades, not as much, but these kind of more light pastel-y nudes are very, very unique for me. I think if people wanted this, and although now she has the new nude like minis, and honestly, I think I would get one of those instead of paying this much money for this like big palette, I would just get one of the new nude like minis because then you could get one of these palettes, a similar formula and a similar kind of style to these, this palette, but it would actually be catering to your exact skin tone. So if you have a more medium to deep complexion, I think those would be better suited for you because if you have a medium and deep complexion, this whole side of the palette like isn't gonna work for you. Whereas if you get the smaller one, the entire palette is cheaper, number one, and it's actually catered to your skin tones. So yeah, I like this one. Ugh. This is the Lancome Absolute Powder. It's just not worth the money. And that's really what it comes down to, I think, for luxury stuff. And I'm actually doing a collaboration with somebody about luxury products. I'm sure you can guess who that is. And this will probably be in it because I just feel like with luxury makeup, I hold this type of makeup to a way higher standard. And that's just because it's so much more money. And as a person who I feel like a lot of you guys do take my recommendations, I never wanna recommend something that's worth this, that's this much money if I don't think that you are going to absolutely be obsessed with it. And I don't think anyone should be obsessed with this powder. It's okay. It's not like horrible, but it's not good. It's definitely not good, but it's not amazing. Like it's not amazing. It's not mind blowing. It's kind of like the new, the new nude palette where it's just like, it's okay. And it was $60. I shouldn't feel that way about a $60 pow powder. I should either, I should have strong feelings one way or the other about a $60 powder. Like I should either love it or hate it. I don't have any strong feelings. I don't really have any feelings at all. I'm just like, meh, it's okay. I use it sometimes. It's meh. I don't know. This powder was definitely a little bit of a letdown and I feel bad because my mom literally went to like five different stores to buy this for me because she had also heard me like talk about it and she wanted to know. I feel bad because I, if going back in time, I would have been like, don't waste your time. It's not, it's not that great. Shout out to my mom though. She's literally the best person ever. Okay. So now we have a few things that I got rid of. So first we have the entire Fourth Ray Beauty, their original like set that they came out with because Fourth Ray Beauty launched right around Christmas time last year. And there was this whole set you could buy that was like, all of their products for like 50 bucks, I think. I ended up using that. I liked the cleanser and I liked the acne spot treatment and I didn't hate the lotion. The oil and the, I think it was a toner, I wasn't absolutely like obsessed with those, um, but I, I finished up the cleanser and the acne treatment, so those are gone. Uh, I still have the moisturizer just like sitting in my, I have like a, I have in my bathroom, <laughs> I store all my skincare and I keep things that I either get in PR or just things that I have extras of or sometimes I'll rotate things and I like to always have those on hand because say I like run out of my moisturizer and I want to use one I can just grab from there basically so I still have the moisturizer but everything else I got rid of I, I ended up giving the oil and the toner to a friend because I thought she would get a lot more use out of it than I would so those were okay I, I actually have the only thing that I've tried from fourth ray that has been like mind-blowingly good is the fourth ray turmeric face milk this stuff is so so bomb it's so good I put it on after I put on like my toners and stuff and this stuff is amazing I really really genuinely enjoy it. I feel like it adds a little bit of brightening to my face, which I really enjoy. But all of the other stuff I tried from that initial set, nothing wowed me. Nothing, there was nothing that I was like, oh my god, I have to rebuy that because this is so amazing. Like, it was just so, so. And the other thing I got was the Morphe Highlighter Palette. That's long gone. That sucked. Um, that Morphe Highlighter Palette, it actually sucks because I actually loved the, like, Morphe Highlighters singles. I thought they were so, so good. And I was a huge fan of the Morphe singles 
angles. Um, and then I got the highlighter palette and it was so bad. It was so bad. It wasn't the same formula. It was these weird colors that like didn't really sit well on my skin. The for I don't know why they changed the formula because they had a good formula on the singles. I'm not sure why they like changed that for this palette, but it was so bad. It was not at all what I expected. And I was so disappointed because I thought in my head, I was like, wow, if you can get eight of these for $25, like that's a really, really good deal because these highlighters are beautiful. They're so glowy and so pretty. And it ended up not being the case, which kind of sucked. I guess that's kind of what you expect from Morphe though, but it sucked because I felt like they could have had a really good product there, but then they just like didn't. The other thing I had was I ended up, I did get two blush stripe palettes for Christmas last year. I got the Malika and I got the Fall Fusion palette. I actually loved the Fall Fusion palette. The Malika, I didn't really use. I actually decluttered it to my mom. She wanted it because uh, she loves pinks and purples. So I actually gave her that palette. The Malika, I, I just never really like used it. I think because a lot of the pinks and purples were very similar. It just wasn't a palette that like called my name or spoke to me. So I didn't use it too much, but I didn't mind the formula. The Blush Stripe Fall Fusion, however, I loved that palette. I thought it was really, really good. I still like have it technically. Now that I'm talking about it, I don't want to get rid of it. I still have it technically. I decluttered it, but I have a bag under here that I'm waiting for friends to go through of decluttered makeup. And this palette is really good. I decluttered it because I just don't reach for it like ever I never ever ever reach for it but it is really pretty and like the formula was really good and I like the fact that the Angelica shade is named after my friend Angelica because <laughs> I love her you might be seeing me live action like not decluttering something because now that I'm talking about it I'm like why am I getting rid of this I love this palette it's a really beautiful like color story and like really beautiful formula and I made the prettiest like suns I remember when I first got this I made the most beautiful like sunset eyes with this palette it's like the perfect sunset eyes palette I'm gonna keep it okay never mind Mind. I liked this. I don't know why I thought about decluttering it. I think because when I was decluttering, I was in a very savage mindset of like anything I don't use needs to go. But I don't know why I was like that because sometimes it's okay to have palettes that you just like don't use every single day, but you still like. And I really like this one still. So this was good. I'm glad I got this for Christmas. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that. Finally, we have the Morphe 35M. There, again, there was nothing wrong with this palette. I just am, I'm never buying a big Morphe palette ever again in my life. I don't use them. I am so passionate the point of needing to bring in that many singular eyeshadows into my collection at one time. Those 35 palettes are ridiculous. Like they're so big. There's so many colors, so many repetitive colors, so many browns. The only reason I really wanted it was because Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips talked me into it, but she liked it because of the grungy greens. Guess what I don't wear? Grungy greens. Um, so it was kind of a stupid palette for me to even ask for in the first place. But I do, I felt like the formula was good. I felt like it was a better formula than like the James palette and what was the other palette or the 39 Glam palette, which was like the pink one, which I didn't really like at all. Um, but I'm pretty over buying those bigger palettes. I think I'm done with it because I just, I'm over it. I don't need them anymore, you know? I'm actually really excited for Christmas this year because I asked for a lot of things that I'm really excited about and a lot of it's not even makeup. Like there's stuff I, I asked for, uh, this was the first year I asked for like a lot of stuff that wasn't makeup related and I don't know if it's maybe I'm kind of phasing out of new, 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 need all these, all this new makeup or maybe I've just kind of learned that adding, I think what I've learned in the past couple of years is that adding this amount of makeup to my collection at once, it kind of just made it so some things didn't get used or didn't get the proper usage they could have. Like the Morphe 35, 35M is a perfect example of a palette that I got. And because I had all these other pretty palettes, I just didn't really use it. So I think I wanted to kind of stagger what I was getting. And the other thing too is I'm a February baby. So then a February comes and I get all this new stuff too. So it's just kind of like, I, I wanted to space it out this year and maybe not bombard myself with new makeup. And also the thing is like when stuff comes out, I've just been buying it now. So it's a little bit different than in years past because I'm able to, because I make money from this channel, I'm able to put that money back into the channel by buying the palettes that I want to buy right when they come out. I don't have to wait till Christmas to get all these things, which is really cool and awesome. But yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Happy Glomus Day too. I had a lot of fun walking down memory lane and kind of telling you guys how I feel about these palettes. I was looking at it. It's so funny because I feel like I had a distinctive theme in years past. Like everything is like rose, everything is like rose golds, golds, and pink. Like that's the 
this entire theme right here, which I think is really funny. I love you guys so much. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media, and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below along with a link to register to vote. That's right. You can go click that link and you can register to vote. And that is the gift that keeps on giving, my friends. Um, and if you're not from the United States and that link does not apply to you, please make sure you're staying informed on what's going on in your country. You're aware of just what's going on, using your voice in a positive way because the world absolutely needs more of it. Um, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!